Globally, about a quarter of a million women die of cervical cancer every year, and 80% of those deaths are in the developing world. So a vaccine to help prevent cervical cancer is really a vaccine for the developing world where the majority of deaths occur and where we can't screen to prevent the disease. We've been working on programmes to help prevent cervical cancer in Vanuatu now for about five years. And what we've seen there is this huge burden of disease amongst younger women. One in a hundred healthy women walking in the streets already have cervical cancer and there, because there is no treatment available, the cancer will eventually progress and kill them. So this is a disease which occurs even in 20-year-olds in Vanuatu. And really, the only hope for preventing cervical cancer in the developing world, and specifically in Vanuatu, is to have a universal vaccination program. Cervical cancer is unique amongst the cancers that are caused by infections in that every cervical cancer is associated with a papillomavirus infection. So if there are no papillomavirus infections, there are no cervical cancers. This makes it ideal for the development of a vaccine because if we can prevent the infection, the disease should disappear. The connection between human papillomavirus infection and cervical cancer was first mooted by Professor Harold Zurhausen back in the early 1980s. He observed that some cervical cancers had signatures of the papillomavirus within them. I became interested in another cancer that was apparently caused by papillomavirus when I was working on diseases that were common in people with damaged immune systems. And we really realised that they had problems with anal cancer as a result of papillomavirus infection. I then started working on developing vaccines to treat papillomavirus infection in the belief that that would help prevent the burden of cancer. I met up with a colleague, Dr. Jan Zhu, in Cambridge when I was on sabbatical there in 1989. And we decided that we needed to build a papillomavirus because we couldn't grow the virus in the lab and therefore couldn't understand the immunology, the body's defences against it. So he and I set out to develop a technology for building the whole virus. And in doing so, we realised that you could actually build the shell of the virus without too much work, so long as you just employed a few tricks along the way. And when we put all the tricks together, which took about a year of hard work, I might say, uh, when we put all the the tricks together, we realised that we were actually building something which could be the basis of a vaccine to help prevent the infection, something that we could get out there to stop the infections. And uh, th this virus-like particle, the shell of the virus, if you like, it was a bit like throwing a pile of building bricks in the corner and then building themselves into the Eiffel Tower because the, we didn't really expect that they would assemble themselves, but when we got the technology right, they did. And that basically became the basis of the vaccine. The next 15 years were spent getting that vaccine into the real world by first of all developing a product and then testing it to show that it was effective. The vaccine was licensed for use in a number of countries including Australia in 2006. Australia was the first country to introduce a routine vaccination program for young women and that was announced in 2006 and started in 2007. It was targeted at young women between the ages of 12 and 25 Half of the programme was delivered through schools and the other through local medical practitioners. And for three years, all women between the ages of 12 and 25 could get the vaccine free of charge. The single most effective public health measure after clean water in terms of looking after the community is vaccination. It prevents countless millions of childhood deaths every year. Many countries can scarcely afford to deliver even the most basic of vaccine programmes. That's why we need organisations like Gavi, like the World Health Organisation, to step in and facilitate the vaccine programmes. The vaccine is available widely in the developed world and is being used quite extensively. But to get it out into the developing world, that's really the major breakthrough that will help prevent cervical cancer in the developing world. For me, the great excitement in all of this has been able to see something which was just an idea back in 1980 turned into something which is practically being delivered in the field in 2010. There are not many people get the chance to go from doing the basic science through the development involved in clinical trials, get it out there into the clinic and seeing it being used in their lifetime. And for me, that's been great. The real reason it's great is because it encourages other people to get on and do the science in other equally challenging areas and realise that you can actually get it out there and that it can be done in your lifetime.